Over the years, there have been numerous cases where evil people end up doing terrible things due to the traits of fanaticism. But even at that, it is difficult to not wonder what level of fanaticism would make a father breed children with his own daughters and kill them afterward. Welcome to Twisted Minds. My name is James, and today we will be looking at the case of Marcus Wesson. As you will soon learn, there are many baffling things about the life and actions of Marcus Wesson. Let's get into it, shall we? Marcus Dellen Wesson, the first out of four children, was born to Benjamin and Carrie Wesson in 1946 on August the 22nd. His parents were members of the then popular church known as the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, as expected, they raised their children to share in their beliefs and to be part of the movement. Wesson's mother in particular, Carrie Wesson, was known as a fanatic when it came to what she believed. On many occasions, it was said that she made Wesson and his siblings study their Bible, whether they wanted to or not. And, as a result, Wesson was forced to partake in his mother's fanaticism. On the other hand, Wesson's father was a heavy drinker and wasn't really present while Wesson and his siblings were growing up. He was also known to have abused his children and often flirted with them. Reports also have it that at some point in his life, he allegedly engaged in homosexual practices, especially with boys that were around Wesson's age or younger. Eventually, Benjamin abandoned his wife and Marcus, along with his other siblings, and ran off with a nephew of his. Until today, nobody knows where the unusual pair went to seek refuge. In the early 1960s, Wesson's mother moved the family from where they had been living with their father to San Bernardino in California. Wesson then started high school, but unfortunately, he couldn't graduate because he didn't have the number of credits that were supposed to qualify him for graduation. As a result, Wesson left high school and decided to join the Army. He joined the Army in 1966 and worked as a driver in the medical department for two years. In 1968, Wesson decided to leave the Army and then move to California. San Jose, to be precise. A little while later, he got involved in a romantic relationship with Rosemary May Torena, a Hispanic who was around her 30s at the time and had already had seven children. Sources claim that Rosemary's husband had been abusive to her while they were together, and so she left the relationship carrying her seven children along with her. After she got into a relationship with Wesson, it didn't take too long for him to move into her house. Months later, Wesson and Rosemary had a son together. The child happened to be the latter's eighth child and Wesson's first. Not considering the fact that Rosemary birthed his first child, Wesson also went ahead and got into a very predatory relationship with one of Rosemary's children, Elizabeth, who was eight years old at the time. Apparently, Wesson was grooming the young girl to be his wife right from that tender age. He would tell Elizabeth that she was his bride, and so she was his. When Elizabeth turned nine, Wesson organized a mock wedding ceremony for both of them. And when she turned 12, the deranged man that was her stepfather began to take sexual advantage over her. In 1974, Elizabeth turned 15, and Wesson figured it was the right time for the both of them to get married, which they did, and illegally at that. To make matters worse, it was also said that at the time that Marcus had wanted to take Elizabeth as his bride, she was already pregnant for him bearing in mind that she was only 15. If you are wondering what Rosemary had to say about all of these, sadly, there are no records of her reaction to this union. About four months after their illegal marriage, Elizabeth gave birth to their first child together, a boy. Soon after, they had four children together, namely Dorian, Adrian, Kiani, and Sabrina, who they all birthed in Santa Clara County. Later in the 1980s, the pair welcomed Donovan, Marcus Jr., Elizabeth, and Sophina, all in Santa Cruz County. And then a little while later, they had Gypsy, who was born in Fresno County. Sadly, however, Donovan died when he was only six years old from spinal meningitis. By the time Elizabeth turned 26, she and Wesson already had nine children together. And because they didn't stay in one place for too long and were known to live from hand to mouth, they were often called the nomadic family. 
So, of course, it didn't help matters when one of Elizabeth's sisters, Rosemary Solero, handed over her seven children to Wesson and his family, saying she could not take care of them due to her drug addiction. According to her, the children were going through abuse in her home, so she thought it best to send them off to her sister Elizabeth. She also added that the children didn't have a problem with leaving as they were quite grateful for the change in environment. Seeing as Wesson then had too many mouths to feed, it was even more difficult for him to take care of his large family. For starters, the family often moved from place to place. And to make matters worse, Wesson did not have a stable job. So he was only able to cater to his family out of the support he got from welfare. At some point, Wesson and his family lived in a boat of about 26 feet. And sometimes his children would go through dumpsters just to see if they would be lucky enough to find something to eat. For a long time, Wesson made his family suffer while he solely enjoyed the benefits he got from welfare. Unfortunately for him, he was arrested for welfare theft in 1989. Still around the 1990s, it continued to seem like things weren't going well for Wesson and his family. Eventually, the family left the boat and moved into a trailer. And after that, they moved into a tent in the mountains of Santa Cruz, where they could barely source water to sustain them. Wesson also lived in a tugboat of 63 feet with his family in Marin County of California. When his children were eventually old enough to work, Wesson kept collecting their paychecks, which aided his quick purchase of the building in Fresno, where he then moved in with his family. As the head of such a large family, Wesson was quite controlling and abusive. Surprisingly, he wasn't only abusive toward his children, but also his wife Elizabeth as well. He made sure that she made little to no contribution to the upbringing of the children. From 1993, Wesson began to groom his family into a cult, and his at that. So rather than sending the children to school, he thought it was a better idea to teach them at home. He used school textbooks and flashcards to teach them and even taught them from his own handwritten Bible. In the Bible, he depicted Jesus as a vampire king and himself as a god. He instructed his children to refer to him as master or lord. He taught them that the society they lived in was filled with sin, and so they weren't allowed to leave the house. He also described the police to his children as devils in blue. Not only did Wesson manipulate the minds of every single person in his family, but he also gave them strict rules to follow. For example, he instructed his wife Elizabeth that whenever they were outside together, she had no business walking beside him, instead behind him, and to do that with her head bowed so that she wasn't looking at anyone. All the while Wesson kept this up, he repeatedly told his children that he was only trying to prepare them for the end and the only way to break out of everything eventually was by committing suicide. He described his daughter Sabrina Wesson and Rosa Solero, his niece, as strong soldiers whose sole responsibility was to ensure that they kill any member of their family who ends up betraying him. He also told them that if it ever gets to the point where it looks like the family is coming apart, they could just kill everyone and then themselves. Wesson even went further to purchase 10 coffins and kept them in the house in possible anticipation. Wesson's children were also not privileged to grow up together and around each other, as Wesson made it a point of duty to keep them apart. He separated his female children from the male, and while he spent more time with his female children, the boys were mostly locked up and given severe punishments whenever they committed offenses. On one occasion, one of the Wesson's sons had snuck off with a spoon of peanut butter. When Wesson caught him, he gave him a 30-day beating. On the other hand, the girls were personally kept under Wesson's watch. He taught them everything he knew about sex, from performing oral sex down to literally having sexual intercourse with his own daughters. It was said that it all began from groping their breasts, then having them perform oral sex on him, and then finally proceeding to have sex with him. He would constantly remind his daughters that they weren't allowed to know any other man the way he knew them, and that they belonged to him since they were chosen by God for him 
and eventually would become his wives. As if to justify his crimes, he would then tell his daughters that he was only being as caring as any normal father would to his daughters. And just like Wesson did with Elizabeth, he carried out mock wedding ceremonies with his daughters. Eventually, five of Wesson's daughters got pregnant for him. He, however, threatened them that if they ever revealed who the father of their children was, he would punish them as well as their children. Wesson's sons became suspicious and began asking their sisters about the men who were responsible for their pregnancies. And they replied saying that they had all gone through artificial insemination. And although the boys suspected that their father was responsible for their sister's pregnancies, none of them dared to confront him. In total, Wesson had 18 children by his wife, his daughters, and his niece. As years passed, the older boys left their father's house, as well as some of the girls. However, before the girls left, there had been some kind of disagreement between Wesson and themselves. Wesson had warned them that their leaving would mean that they were done with the family and would never return. He also added that even if they did, he wouldn't accept them into the family, no matter how much they begged for his forgiveness, especially seeing as they were trying to do the one thing he had always been apprehensive about, breaking the family apart. However, the two left but later came back on March 12, 2004 to carry their children along with them. And as you would expect, there was a lot of commotion. But before the police could get to their house, Sophina ran in to grab her seven-year-old son, Jonathan, intending to head out the same way. However, Rosa, Safina's sister, who stayed with Wesson until she became an adult, grabbed Jonathan out of his mother's grasp and proceeded to lock him in the room where the other children were. Sophina was then chased out of the house and was prevented by Wesson from going back in. Deciding that it was time for all the madness to stop, Ruby and Safina then decided to go and inform the police. Think about how brave of an action this is from the two women to have been raised and brainwashed their entire lives and do that to the man they believed was God. After the women gave their statements, policemen were assigned to escort them into the Wesson house. Having seen the police, Wesson then ran into his house and refused to come out, despite receiving orders from the uniformed men to do so. And since they didn't have any legal right to go into the house, they could only remain outside. That is, until Rosa and Elizabeth came out of the house and reported that Wesson had a gun with him. At this point, the authorities called for backup, plus the interference of a SWAT team, which came in minutes later. As they all began to surround the house, Wesson came out surrendering, with coats of blood on his clothes. The police then went into the house and found nine bodies piled up against each other and what looked like a bullet hole in each of their eyes. Two of the children were Wesson's daughters, while the remaining seven were Wesson's grandchildren. They were Sabrina April Wesson, 25, Elizabeth Wesson, 17, Illabel Carey Wesson, 8, Aviv Dominique Wesson, 7, Jonathan St. Charles Wesson, 7, Ethan St. Laurent Wesson, 4, Marshy St. Christopher Wesson, 1, Jeva Wesson, 1, and Sedona Vadra Wesson, 1. Truly tragic. At Wesson's trial, Wesson, in his defense, said that Sabrina, his 25-year-old daughter, had committed the murders. According to him, after she had killed the other children, including her son Marshy, who was a year and six months old, she then killed herself. Also, the weapon which was used in carrying out the murders was a handgun, and it was found lying close to Sabrina's body. Since that was not enough evidence, the police then carried out DNA tests, which they did, and got to find out that Sabrina had indeed been in possession of the gun. In 2005, June 17th, Wesson was charged with first degree murder on nine counts because he had been the one who fed Sabrina ideologies about being a strong soldier in the family, who was to ensure that anyone who betrayed him was killed, and that she also had the right to kill anyone in the family if the family threatens to break apart. Also, Wesson was found guilty of coerced sexual crimes on 14 counts, including taking sexual advantage of his seven daughters and nieces who were still underage. On June 27, 2005, 
A few days after he was charged for his numerous crimes, Marcus Dellen Wesson was given a death sentence. Now, 75 years old, Wesson is in San Quentin State Prison awaiting execution. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Marcus Wesson, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.